it's Allie. Thank you so much for watching my first garden video. It means so much to hear all your support and all your kind words you've shared with me so far, and I'm so excited to share more. Hearing how many of you share the same excitement about gardening with me is pretty cool, so I'm super excited to share today's video. So I'm going to start with the basics. Any successful garden needs to start with a good foundation after the snow melts to give their plants the best chance at living their best life. So we're going to start with a mini garden tour and we're going to do a comparison between March and April so you kind of get an idea of the important areas in our garden before and after. And then at the end of the video we're going to talk about basic garden prep that needs to happen before the last frost before you start transplanting your flowers and your vegetables into your garden. Alright, let's go! First things first, I have my trusty sidekicks with me, Leo and Dips, who are always ready to join me outside when I get out into the garden. Okay, to start this tour, we're going to begin in the front yard. Here we have most of our daffodils. They come every year in a variety of different types. I believe there's four to be exact. They begin to pop before the last frost, and they're pretty hardy in the cold unless it dips below minus one for a couple nights in a row. Then you should cover them with some spare sheets. They last roughly one month, and they give you lots of fresh flower bouquets. I highly recommend them if you're looking for an easygoing, low-maintenance flower that comes every year. Alright, next, we talk to our neighbor and we planned a new fence design to give us a little more privacy on both sides. We decided on an intermittent row of narrow emerald cedar trees that should grow about 15 feet and we're spacing them out with orange perennial tiger lilies in between. First, we had to fix the fence, then transplant the lilies before they grew too big and move them a few inches forward and then we planted the trees. And ta-da! An easy low maintenance design that is unique and pretty. Here we have some succulents. I just wanted to add this in here to prove that succulents can survive outside throughout the winter and thrive. In the summer, these bad boys will bloom with a cute pink flower. Moving on to the side of the house, where a lot of our perennials and peonies grow, a hefty cleanup had to be done to clean out all the dried leaves we used to cover the plants over the winter. A little raking, and we're golden. Just need some mulch to fill in the gaps later, and these peonies are ready to grow. to the backyard. We have multiple garden beds, but I'm going to focus on the one on the hill. It has a bunch of different irises, peonies, lavender, different types of ground cover, bushes, and these little prickly pear cactuses that we're experimenting with from last year. In March, they appear dehydrated and sad, but eventually, over the course of one month, they now look fuller, and I'm hopeful they'll survive. Here's a quick little preview of our biggest garden bed where half of it's for veggies and half of it's for wildflowers. The best of both worlds. When summer hits, this area is in its prime, full of color and life. You made it to the end of the garden tour. Time to burn all the yard waste and dispose of the rest at the dump. Now let's get into the prepping of the greenhouse and the vegetable garden. Hopefully you learn a thing or two about getting your garden in its best form from the get-go. Welcome to our greenhouse. It's up all year and it measures approximately 10 by 15 feet. We built raised garden beds inside and we put a shelf in it as well. It has two windows to ventilate and it's pretty sturdy, but we added some extra support to the walls because it can get pretty windy on our property. When preparing the soil in your greenhouse, it's important to remove any old big roots that were left behind from last year. Make sure you rake it all out churn the top soil and prepare it for the next batch of fresh soil. We get our greenhouse soil from a local garden store in Acton. It's a special triple mix for vegetables. We used roughly five wheelbarrows worth in the greenhouse. You gotta spread it all around and voila, it's almost ready to go. It's important to finish it off with a good dumping of water to hydrate the soil and let it soak in for a couple days before you sprinkle in your first batch of seeds. Veggie garden time! After the snow melts, everything looks super doom and gloom, and the soil is super chunky. We decided to extend the veggie garden about three feet because we wanted to plant a couple more rows of vegetables. Last year, the squashes took quite a bit of space, so we wanted more room to grow. We had to bring in the big guns to do the digging. 
And we had the real muscles finish it off. Then we used the trailer to add a yard of the same soil we used in the greenhouse that our veggies love. You gotta spread her out and wait until the last frost to transplant your veggies outside. We spruced up the overgrown bushes and added some extra soil to the wildflower bases to give them some extra nutrients. And there you go! Now we wait and enjoy the delicate little wildflowers that bloom at this time of year. Now that the fire is fading and the cats are ready to go inside, I think we're all done with this garden prep and mini tour. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.